I'm Alfred, but my friends call me Alfie. All I was trying to do was find a nice, quiet place where I could think about stuff without bothering anyone. It was an old library. Don't ask me how I got the key, but let's just say the librarian doesn't have to worry about snow in her driveway this winter. Well, she shouldn't have, but while I was there, I found this old book, and it was how to make an entire world inside your imagination. And before I knew it, I was here. I guess she's gonna have to find someone else to take care of that problem. I'm in some kind of kingdom. And there are other people here, too. It looks like this place is some kind of land specially built for people to come and think and talk without bothering anyone. There's a lot of cool people here. I don't think I've met them all. Well, this is neat. It looks like they're having a parade. I wonder what the celebration is about. That's right. It's the It Me Founders Day Festival. A day of fun and good times. Today is for remembering the things that make life worth living, like excitement and curiosity and the killer selection of hair products available at affordable prices to the average consumer and all the Hawaiian shirts we could ever want. You're missing the point. It's more than that. It's a celebration of when our town was founded. Legend says there was a boy in the forest who had lost his way. It was dark, and he was afraid because the noises of the forest were scary, and he didn't know where he was. Then, in the middle of the night, underneath a full moon, with a cool wind blowing from the east, a sparkle appeared in the sky, and the boy found himself wishing. A thing we know to be true, the way we often encounter monsters here together. The story says that sparkle was a small sliver of the great potential, a creature of tragic beauty. For you see, the great potential can be anything it wishes in the realm of all imagination. Set. At the moment of creation, the moment when the great potential of imagination is realized, the potential dies, leaving everything it has to become something greater than itself. And that sliver of great potential looked down at the scared boy and saw he was in danger from all the nearby monsters. So the sliver of potential prepared to sacrifice itself to give the boy a place of perfect protection so the monsters wouldn't ever be able to get to him. Well, that sounds pretty nice. It only sounds like that because you interrupted me. Pay attention. I wasn't finished. You see, this sliver of great potential was different than the others. It was different because it was afraid to die. And instead of realizing its full potential, it kept itself alive only by bringing part of its transformation to life. So instead of becoming the perfect place of protection it was meant to be, all of the pieces it would take to do such a thing got all scrambled up and nothing worked the way it was supposed to, except for one very important thing. What's that? The castle walls and town gate are strong, nearly impenetrable. That is because the sliver of great potential had a crazy plan to have its cake and eat it too. Cake? Who's talking about cake? I'm not very happy with you, you wavy-haired buffoon. You tricked me into coming here. You said we were going to get popcorn. Nobody said anything about cake, and I certainly don't want to be part of any parade. The popcorn is not imaginary. There's a popcorn stand at the end of the parade, and anyone riding a float gets free popcorn. Wait a minute. Don't things like parades usually have snacks for the people watching them? What? That doesn't make any sense. Why should the people watching have the popcorn? The people on the floats are doing all the work. I had to give up part of my Sunday for this. I'm not very happy about that. If anything, you should be making popcorn for us. You're lucky you get to watch. 
and aren't being put to work for the pleasure of it. Don't listen to any of them. Here's the next part of the story. The piece of the great potential believed that if it only gave itself enough to make the pieces, but so that it also could protect it inside the city walls, then it was possible those pieces would move around and arrange themselves into what it knew it could become without having to sacrifice itself. The story says when the last monster attacks the city and the alarm no longer sounds, the town will complete its transformation and become a place that no longer needs walls to live up to its full potential. That was long, long ago. I don't believe you. <laughs> yeah. Since I'm loath to agree about anything with you, I'll change the subject and ask, how the devil did you get your own parade float? Some of us have been here a long time before our first parade. Who's responsible for this? Something is the matter here. I want to know who's behind this right now. We tried to tell him when he showed up with the parade floats that he wasn't allowed to be in the parade. He just kept saying he doesn't believe us, and his armor was too thick to stop him. We really can't stop him when he makes up his mind to go somewhere. Oh, great. He's responsible. Well, just because you look like us and have your own float doesn't mean we have to recognize you. Your float doesn't count. Not a fit. Don't believe you. It counts. Yeah. We made it to the first stop of the reenactment. The Dark Times. Attention, citizens of It Me. We're about to begin our Founders Day Remembrance. That means we'll be setting off the alarm for the kingdom's monster detection systems. Please remember, this is only a test. In the event of a real monster, the castle defenses will be deployed immediately to respond to the threat. It's time to lead the call to adventure and come together to defend the kingdom from its latest threat. Look around and look at each other and hear the call. Look into your heart and say, it me together. It me too. Oh. That's right. These are the dark times. The kingdom hasn't figured out how to do that yet. Let's see what happens when a monster approaches and we aren't here to come together and face it. Oh wow, that guy exploded. I don't believe it! <laughs> oh my god! No, don't go over there! Oh no! Oh that, no! No, Th that's horrific! This, this is just pretend, right? The monsters here don't really do that if they get inside, do they? There is a very good reason I always tell you to pay attention. Yes, when the monster makes it inside the city walls, that is what happens. Even today, with things being safer and nicer than they have ever been in the entire history of this place, we are never more than a few very bad decisions away from everything we have built being torn apart from powerful forces trying to get inside. The, the monster is attacking everything. What are they going to do? That's a good thing you came along to ask that question. Every year during the parade, we're all very worried this will be the year someone doesn't ask what happens next. Because if no one asks, obviously that means the story wouldn't continue. It's getting to the good part. You see, I've been here longer than anyone else, before the kingdom was ever here. I'll show you how we used to handle things back in the good old days, before all this coming together nonsense. Cooperation is all well and good, but sometimes you're on your own. And it's nobody's fault if a monster gets you. I can tell you the ones who stood there explaining to themselves and anyone who would listen that the monsters weren't there or weren't dangerous got eaten the fastest. I'd give you some popcorn to shut you up for the rest of it, but someone decided that snacks would be reserved for the end of the demonstration. That is how it always has been. I can't say it is right, or I would have done the same thing. I wasn't on the planning committee for when snacks would be served. That was someone else. Wait a minute. 
If you were there when all that stuff was going on, well, how come you didn't eat, get eaten by monsters? They tried. You aren't thinking about this very hard, are you? Hasn't your mind told you that something isn't quite adding up? If this place was made to be safe against monsters, and I was here before this place, what does that tell you about me? Hang on. Are you trying to tell me you used to be a monster? What do you mean, used to be? That's rather insensitive to assume that just because I'm a monster that I can't live here. That kind of thinking makes you more a monster than I am. Hmm. Maybe it's not your fault. I am a very special kind of monster. Special is right. I love this guy. He always has something interesting to say. I do not. Stop piling all these expectations on me. I'm only pretending to be a friend until I can figure out a way to eat you. You're going too fast with all of this. Here's what you need to know. Look into my eyes and make sure to guard your soul against the greatest darkness and fears you're capable of imagining. And then watch as my own imagination expands your ability to imagine more possibilities that you ever knew even existed faster than your ability to keep up, trapping you inside the terror of not being able to ignore how badly you're failing to live up to your own potential. You see, I am the worst kind of monster. I am a monster that tells you the truth. I'm the one who dares ask. If you think you know what's going on, before you've asked these types of questions yourself. So tell me, Alfie, are you brave enough to test yourself against an old and tired monster whose only weapons are the words from his geriatric and likely calcium deficient bones? Care to see how you stack up compared to the other monsters I was out there competing against? You don't have to do that. You have nothing to prove to him. You're right. I don't have anything to prove to him. But, but that doesn't let me off the hook. Because the kind of questions he was making me ask made, made me realize... Well, I don't know what it means. But what but I do know is, is now I have something I need to prove to myself. Whoa, boy! The stones on this one. You must be very brave to say that. Very brave indeed. While I think you've overestimated yourself, there's no denying that bravery is something you've been practicing for a long time. Oh, oh yeah? How do you know I've been practicing? Don't insult me, because I'm no fool when it comes to games of fear. Which includes a long and detailed list of all the different kinds of bravery, and what it means to challenge each of them at their weakest point. You gave yourself away simply. People who are born brave could never do what you did. It's the cowards who are ironically so afraid of being cowards. They get sick of the wholeness and start pretending to be braver and braver until they aren't pathetic lumps who are constantly paralyzed by fear. You see, Alfie, I know because I've made it my business to know what makes everything afraid. And so long as there is hesitation, so long as that moment to gather courage is present, that moment is where I come in and ask you the questions you're too scared to ask yourself, and I'll mock you to no end if I think you aren't being honest about it. All right then, it's time to find out if just because you are unusually practiced in the art of pretending to be brave, if there is enough to protect you against what I have in store. Perhaps you doubt if your power can stand up to my own. I do have strange powers, you know. I said I would do it, and I'll do it. So, so, so quit your stalling for time and, and get going. Hey, kid. Hey, I'm, I'm kind of busy here. What is it? It'll only take a second. I'm not allowed to help you. But just remember, it me too. Don't forget. Oh, he, he's looking over here. Gotta go. Be cool. Be cool. Good luck. What the devil is going on over there? You aren't trying to cheat, are you? There's no cheating on the test. Test? 
What's all this about a test? Don't worry about it. You've got bigger problems to worry about. You asked what it was like for me to be a monster before the town. And I didn't lie to you. What I failed to mention is that I wasn't just the most powerful of all of the monsters. I was their undisputed lord and master as well. It didn't matter how sharp their claws were, or how big they were, or what kind of weapons they brought. None of them could stand against me. So all of these monsters that have been attacking the town, do you think you could stand up against them all by yourself? Without the announcer and the people from the group behind you every step of the way, guiding your hand to tell you what you should already know is right? But what about their bravery? I'm sure you admire it. Of course you admire it. You're just pretending to have it. And they make you see how thin your courage really is compared to theirs. And you don't know what to do with that. So you worship them as a higher power with your admiration for what you know you'll never be capable of. The truth is you don't belong here, do you? You don't know what you're doing. You know you don't belong here because you keep needing everyone to save you from yourself. You're going to get people killed trying to protect you. Why don't you stop lying to yourself and admit you're really a coward? God damn, that's some really hot stuff. Hey, don't believe him. Yeah. <laughs> Now, now, hold on a minute. Time out. Bring me the sacred earmuffs. Sacred earmuffs? What sort of insanity is all this? Well, I'm trying to scare you, remember? Do you think it's in my best interest to explain anything that would put your mind at ease? Now put the earmuffs on, or you'll fail the test I told you not to worry about. No one is allowed to talk during the test. Everybody knows that. Don't believe you. Yeah. <laughs> It is a fair challenge to a rather unprecedented situation. I will consult the rules of the test so long as all of you agree that this situation will not be covered in the book and we will have to do our best to interpret what the spirit of the test is trying to accomplish. Do I have your agreement on this? Yes, I swear it. Yes, I demand justice. Convince me it's fair. The Jester wasn't king of the monsters for nothing. We might lose another one. I have found the lines of text that give us the answer. During the test, no judges of the official parade test ritual will speak to offer advice, counsel, or in any way interfere with the purity of the test. Any attempts to do so will result in automatic failure with the penalty being exiled from the kingdom, possibly forever. Oh no! Because of this, it has become abundantly clear to me. It's not fair. There, there was a real chance with this one. There, there was potential for success. My decision is that Alfie's test has. No, no, no. This is all my fault. Not been compromised. He will be allowed to continue. Does anyone here challenge my ruling? Speak now and be heard, considered, and understood. No, I don't challenge it. It was all my fault. I made such a big fuss about that metal trash can over there not being officially recognized that my own testimony would stand against me. And it's not fair. I had him. He was about to crack before this toaster man spoke up. I ag agree. I don't like it. Mostly because it's using the rules I insisted upon and everyone agreed to earlier to make me happy. I did this to myself and I hate it when I don't have anyone else to blame but me. I don't like that one bit. Time works against me. No sense wasting more of it. It only gives him time to calm down and process things. My job is to crack him, not slow boil him a bit at a time until he gets used to it. That just makes my job harder. I'm going back to work now. Now where were we? That's right, you had some questions to think about. What is your response? I gave you plenty of time with no distractions. Yeah, you sure did give me a lot to think about. And you're right. About everything. It's not easy for me to be brave. And, and I do practice it. And, and half the time I'm terrified. And I think I must have made a terrible mistake. And the other half, I'm, I'm just confused. And lately, confused is a good day. 
So, so I don't have a lot of good answers to those questions because I'd never asked myself them before. And, and you were right about one thing. You are pretty strong. And I can see why all those other monsters did whatever you told them. But I haven't had my eyes closed since I got here. A little while ago, I, I would have just said about anything to make you stop asking me those hard questions. I probably would have ran away. But everyone here helped teach me how to overcome that. You made me doubt myself. That's not a bad thing. But when I realized I doubted myself, I was afraid to feel weak by admitting all the things I didn't know. But then I realized that it wasn't you that was doing any of that. It was me responding to you. I probably wouldn't have figured it out in time if that guy over there hadn't shouted for me not to believe you. He was right, except it's not you I need to challenge. It's the parts of me that doubt myself. So I said to myself, am I really limited by words just like that because you say so? Well, no, I don't believe you. Yeah, yeah. Must we go through this? It's humiliating. No one likes a show off if you explain it all. But you never lie. Part of me thinks that's because you don't see the whole truth and you recognize a new truth enough when you see it. I saw that because I have been paying attention. And, and the last bit, the most important part, it me too. You're just like me. And if I have doubts and you're strong, that probably means you have doubts and think parts of me are strong. That means I might not have to do everything the way you say. I might be strong enough to try something else and not even realize it. And I haven't quite figured out what that is, but, but that's what I think is true. Yes, yes, very good. Does anyone challenge the boy has passed the test? I am satisfied. Okay, you pass. You know, it's been a long time since I've been defeated. You found my weakness. What's that? Well, you already doubted yourself before I could make you do it. It's all about the element of surprise. I change things this way and that to make you nervous. And then you panic and make stupid choices. But I can't very well do that if you've already gotten yourself to a point where you would have a bit of doubt sprinkled into everything you believe. I was beginning to think no one else would ever figure it out. Well, who figured it out last time? Ugh. Don't make me say it. I'll save you, buddy. It was me. I didn't do it on purpose. All I did was saw this really strong guy who didn't lie and asked very good questions. Once I got past the presentation, I believed I could learn a lot from him. I still do. So I told him I was happy to hear what he had to say, so long as I get to be the boss of me in the end. Yes, that's always true. I don't make anyone do anything. I only ask questions. The rest of what happens is on them. They don't need any help from me making bad choices. I sure get my share of blame for it. As for him, yes, he beat me by having that stupid, curious grin in his face and not hating me for raising hard questions. It's true, I ask the worst ones first. But if one can answer those, then I ask a lot of useful ones after that too. Questions you have no business asking if you can't handle the hard ones in front of them. You set your own limits there. If you're weak enough, those limits create a small box around you, trapping you, until you ask me to leave. Since you're asking me and not doing what you were always allowed to do in the first place, well, I take a price for bothering me. But you aren't stopped by that, so my powers don't work on you. Okay, but, but what is this test everyone keeps talking about? Well, don't worry about that. That's enough of that. It's my turn to speak. I'm sure you have questions. Now is the time to ask them. Okay, I'm, I'm starting to get really frustrated here. Somebody better start talking before I get mad. Tuh, <laughs> I'd like to see that. I don't think you're capable of it, really. It's the only reason you won, you know. You were more afraid of being afraid than you were of anything I could do to you. You just imagined an even bigger fear than me for you to worship. You're loyal to your master, but you're still afraid. I'll figure out how to get there eventually. I don't believe you. <laughs> yeah. Quiet, you. A man can float on water or sink in it. Uh, what does that mean? 
I suddenly find myself very confused. Don't worry, that's normal. Think about what I've said, what you think it means, and I'll believe you're telling me your honest truth. Nobody floats on water. Everybody knows that anything which breaks the surface tension displaces some of it into the liquid which places them in the water. But given enough size, a displacement like that would become as irrelevant as a dimple on a golf ball. Yes, you have it. Now think about it quietly. Remember what I taught you. You learn faster when you are quiet. It's always worked before. Yeah, I remember. I'll figure it out. Just give me a little time. Just a little time. Okay, kid. I'm laying out all the cards on the table for you. No more secrets after this. Surprises. Well, that's life. But no more hidden information. Do you trust me to tell you the truth? Even the parts of it that'll make you mad. I've been watching you for a long time. I don't think it's possible for you to do anything besides try to help people. I'm not mad at anyone. Well, maybe a little. But if the explanation is good, well, I don't know. I'll just have to wait until you give me your side of things so I can make up my mind. Okay, good. It all starts with the parade. Every year, this parade happens. Some years, it comes and goes. Sometimes, there's a visitor here. If there is a visitor here, we all agreed long ago they had to be put to the test for their own safety and ours. So this wasn't you guys picking on me. This is some kind of tradition? You could call it that. The point is, you can look around here and see this is a pretty dangerous place. Alfie, not everyone who comes here leaves alive. The monsters are real. Before the rules were in place for the test, we used to try and keep the visitors safe as long as we could. But we could always tell the ones that were really holding themselves back. Holding back for any reason, even the fear of looking silly, is a waste of potential. And in a place like this, that is what gets you killed. We got tired of saying goodbye, so we all came together and agreed that new visitors would be tested during the parade to see if they had enough sense to avoid getting killed by the monsters. What happened to the ones that failed? They are removed from the kingdom and banished until the proctor says they can come back. I'll never tell that ahead of time. I only say when it begins and when it ends. I could have got kicked out of the kingdom over this? Holy hamburgers! Isn't that a little harsh? What about a warning or something? You got warnings all the time. Do you think I tell you when to pay attention for my own benefit? It is harsh. It's better than the alternative. I'm too weak to bury another child who never got to live because they were cut down by monsters. Let me ask you another important question. Do you know why you are here? I'm here because of the book I found. It brought me here. That's a fair answer to a different question I didn't ask. What you have said is true, but that is how you got here, isn't it? That really doesn't answer the question of why very well at all. Well, now that you mention it, when you say it that way, I don't think I know why I'm here. None of us do. We don't know where the monsters come from. We don't know why the visitors keep coming, or what they are supposed to do. Most of us believe that when the right visitor comes along, they will be able to figure that out for us. Oh, so what happens now? Nothing. The parade's over. Now where are the snacks I was promised? That's right. This concludes the annual Founders Day Parade. It's time for snacks. I feel like I should be a lot more worried about some of these things. Good. If you need any help coming up with more things to worry about, I can give you lots of things to practice. But first, I'm going to take this delicious popcorn home. Wait, you spent so much time asking about it. 
Aren't you going to eat it now? Well, who told you I was going to eat it? You aren't using your brain. I don't have a digestive tract. I would just be crushing it up and dropping it on the floor. So what are you going to do with it then? That's none of your business. Besides, we've run out of episode. What? <laughs>